Hello there once again and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you're here. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today we welcome in the Secretary of State. Yes, uh, Glenn Coffey, former President Pro Tem of the Senate, and as a matter of fact, the first Republican to ever hold that position. Uh, after, his, uh, uh, after he was term limited out in the uh, Senate, he was asked by Governor Fallon to come in and serve in the capacity as Secretary of State and as one of her principal advisors. That's what he's doing, and we're going to find out what's been going on. Session is winding down. We'll get the rundown from Glenn Coffey, today's guest on The Verdict. When someone looks at me, they looked at the disability before they look at the purse. Nothing builds esteem like having a job and being able to provide for yourself. At Goodwill, we turn donations and resources into jobs. It's so much that a person can do with a disability. It's beyond our wildest dreams. The parallel between repurposing things and repurposing people lies in seeing the value. If you give me a chance, I, I won't let you down. The resources that we are now seeing from Chesapeake, which did start with a financial contribution, has grown into other resources. They are willing to have their staff provide time, energy, expertise. Chesapeake opens doors for goodwill. It is the right example to give to people who are refashioning their lives and their future is brighter. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey, Meyer, Eatman, Tate, in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome back to the set of The Verdict uh, an old friend, Glenn Coffey, the Honorable Glenn Coffey, Secretary of State of the State of Oklahoma. Glenn did his undergraduate work at Northeastern State University, and when he graduated, he was designated the outstanding senior in his class, did his law work at the University of Oklahoma. He served for 12 years with distinction in the Oklahoma State Senate and he uh, was selected as the very first Republican ever to be President Pro Tem of the Senate and uh, served very well in having the transition from a democratically uh, Democrat controlled uh, legislature to a Republican control controlled legislature. Uh, he's had many honors and awards and most recently he was asked by Governor Fallon to serve as uh, Secretary of State He's doing so, and he's also serving as a principal advisor to Governor Fallon on major issues here in Oklahoma. Glenn, welcome back. Thanks. It's good to be back. Glad let's, to have you. Let's talk about the duties of the Secretary of State. Constitutionally, what are, what, what are the, the duties? Well, uh, it, it is a constitutional office, and the, it's unusual in some respects. In, in many states, the Secretary of State deals with the election duties. My office doesn't play a role in that at all, uh, but we do. We're, in effect, the record keeper for the state. We All the corporate records... Uh, LLCs, corporations, uh, business trade names are filed uh, with my with with, uh, with with my agency. Now we also uh, do the record keeping and the ministerial duties as it relates to state questions when they're put on the ballot either by um, initiative petition mm -hmm. or by the legislature. Uh, our office uh, goes through the process of confirming the signatures and and then uh, publishes that information. Is the Secretary of State elected in other states or is it? It, it is in, in a number of states and it's it's different. It's probably about half and half. Hmm. And your view on that? Well, uh, you know, we have a, we have quite a few statewide elected officials. I think the role uh, that uh, Tom Cole and Mike Hunter established in the Keating administration is a great one. Uh, you, you have a these ministerial duties, and I've got a great deputy, I have to say, uh, Michelle Day runs that office for me and does a great job, uh, but, but it's a perfect place uh, for somebody that has some political 
knowledge, some procedural knowledge with the legislature to advise the governor. Mm -hmm. And I've got a great boss, and it's a real privilege to have that opportunity. Right. Well, I want to tell you a secret. Now, we're not going to let our viewers know about this, but <laughs> I want to tell you. Okay. Uh, you did mention that your, your office, uh, of course, is very much involved in the initiative petition work and getting a, taking a petition and counting the signatures and making sure everything's done right. Uh, so that the Supreme Court can do whatever it chooses to do. I want to compliment you. I'm involved in that from time to time and compliment you and your staff on what a great job your, your staff does in handling a rather difficult and sometimes contentious uh, process. And uh, if it weren't done so well by your folks, it would be a lot more difficult and not nearly as, uh, as uh, successful as I think it is. That's, thank, that's thank not a question. <laughs> But thank, well, I, just, I would just say thanks, and, and we do have a great staff. We've got a number of people that have been there 15 and 20 and even 25 years. It's very experienced, and they're customer friendly, and we try to keep it that way. Well, you do a good job with it. Uh, <clears throat> talk a little bit about currently what you're doing uh, as a, a policy advisor for the governor. I had a friend the other day that was in the office, and I think they summed it up well. He said, uh, you know, the governor has two chiefs. She has the chief of staff, which is Denise Northrup, who does a phenomenal job, and she's she served her career with the governor and, and really does a great job and ran the campaign. And and, he, and she has a chief of stuff, and you're you're the chief of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I do whatever the project is at, at the time that the governor would have me do. Uh, as you know, I uh, I got involved uh, when uh, we had a vacancy in the uh, legal counsel position. I kind of I, I I was enhanced role in that, uh, the water negotiations, I'm advising the governor and, and working uh, with the AG on the legal team, but also working on the mediation. And with my legislative background, my job is to work with the legislative leaders, negotiate on the, on the big issues, the, on the governor's agenda, the budget, and uh, work through the process, along with Preston Dorflinger, who, does that, who shares part of that role with me. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about this legislative session? What, how, how do you feel it's going here as we wind it down? Well, it's 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 an election year, and they're always lively. Uh, it was we had an added bit of um, intrigue added to the process with filing occurring during session. So you have a few legislators. The majority of the legislature, the House, I think specifically, uh, has already been reelected. So that adds a certain amount of freedom uh, mm -hmm. before they leave office that they would normally have. Have that Nobody knowledge. filed against them, so Correct. they're automatically in. Correct. But you do have a number of incumbents who are facing uh, challengers in the Senate and the House. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I think that could play a role in, in decisions that are made. But good news is the Constitution requires the legislature to conduct their business by the end of May. You have to balance the budget and leave. And, and that's really, um, I, I think, we're we're the key issues that are left. The budget has to be negotiated. We're just starting that process. The governor has said that she wants a significant tax cut uh, without affecting core services. The legislature has been public about some of their ideas and the governor is going to begin the process of working, um, sharing her views and working out mm -hmm. a, an agreement on that. A and the budget will be impacted by that. It was assumed that there would be uh, quite a bit of pro-business legislation both last year and, and then continuation this year. How is that process working for you? Are you satisfied with the, with the pro-business legislation that you all have done so far? Well, I think a, a, a meaningful tax cut would be a huge statement uh, in that regard. And uh, certainly the, the governor has received a lot of interest about that as she's gone around the country. Um, there have been disagreements between business community on some issues. Uh, but I think the other important um, benchmark for being pro-business is the intangible tax. Mm -hmm. uh, the Supreme Court created a uh, created a tax, if you will, by their ruling, and there is an effort to put an, uh, a measure on the ballot to correct that and, mm -hmm. and, and satisfy the constitutional needs as it relates to intangible tax, which is, which is a complicated uh, ad valorem issue for businesses. And in, in general, doesn't it tax uh, copyrights and patents as an asset? It, it, that's exactly a, right. Yeah. Uh, companies uh, like my family business, we sell a product. Uh, it, it's a service company that lists uh, pretty much a lot of what we do is intangible, and that would add a, a huge tax increase to a company like ours. And this is a new interpretation? That's correct. Okay. Uh, does it appear from your reading of the tea leaves that that uh, resolution is going to pass? It, it's, it seems very positive. I, I, I don't have a vote on the fourth floor, and I don't want to presuppose what they'll do, but sure. all indications are that uh, it's get, receiving favorable treatment. Mm -hmm. 
What other ideas do you think are going to play out here over the last two weeks? Well, there are a number of important measure, uh, measures. The, uh, the speaker has spent a lot of time on his criminal justice program. It's, um, it's been passed by both chambers. It's sitting in the House waiting acceptance of Senate amendments if that happens and it goes to the governor's desk and, and she'll review it to, to sign it. Uh, or, and uh, the budget and, and taxes uh, I mm -hmm. think will play a, a dominant role in the next mm -hmm. four weeks as, uh, from when we're taping this. Uh, mm -hmm. To, uh, to determine what the outcome, and, and I'm sure there'll be other issues that crop up. Natural gas prices are lower, how does that affect the budget on the revenue side? Well, you know, the numbers, uh, there's a lot of hand-wringing about that, but, but the way the process works is our numbers certified, what we have to deal with. We have to be responsible, and I think it's good to be mindful of uh, how that might impact the certified numbers, because you're, you're trying to read the tea leaves for the future. Uh, but most of the, the projections that I've seen don't, uh, don't eat into the buffer that's created by the constitutional process. We set aside 5% of the revenues just to make sure that the, the money really comes in at the level that people predict it will. And so um, all the projections seem to be within that margin of error. So I don't really think it affects this budgeting process. People are voicing their caution as they have a right to do. Glenn, I think we have to go to a break, but uh, I've got a question I wanted you to be thinking about. Okay. What issues uh, have uh, not been taken up this session that the governor would like to have had considered. And with that, we'll welcome Glenn Coffey back. When Little we, teaser. When we return <laughs> on the verdict. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb-Greetham, I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology, exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. We believe in Bulldogs, Rams, and Spartans. But above all, we believe in students. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry is investing millions in education, equipping over 10,000 teachers with the nation's first energy-based curriculum. We're ensuring every Oklahoma student is equipped to lead America's energy future. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of the verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Secretary of State Glenn Coffey. Before we went to break, Kent mentioned, what is the legislature not taking up this, this year that you might either expect that they would have or wish they would have? Well, I think the governor's done a good job of setting expectations and not trying to do everything at once. Although uh, she had a remarkably successful session last year when it came to workers' comp reform, tort reform. Uh, there was some tax cuts and there were there were significant reform and, and her agenda was accomplished this year we're going to we're going to make a uh, another big step in transportation which is uh, important and needs to, to continue to happen um, what do you expect in transportation let me cut you off there uh, the, it's a great question the governor announced before session a, uh, a budget uh, or a, a plan that would not affect the eight-year plan negatively but that in, in during the governor's term 
would all of the bridges that are deficient on state roads currently would be brought uh, would would be updated, replaced, or, or modernized so that they're safe. At the same time, we would set aside some money for the counties to do the same thing. Uh, we also, as a part of that, uh, as as the renovations occurring in, in your town, mayor, uh, mm -hmm. we're we're uh, conserving a lot of those beams, and they're mm -hmm. going to be. Uh, shipped all across the state over the next few weeks and, and put and, and reused in some of those county bridges to to help make those projects go further uh, without additional cost. Mm -hmm. All right, what else besides transportation? Well, that's really the focus. I mean, the governor has has really wanted to make sure that uh, taxes is what she heard a lot on the, the trail. She went around the country talking to, um, uh, to different CEOs that were impressed with what happened but, but brought that up. So that's really what, where her focus has been. Uh, we still need to do more to uh, to create jobs. We've brought up the closing fund. Uh, we think that's an important tool for the governor to have. I don't know where that's going to go this session, but it will be a it'll be on her list next year if it's not completed this year. Uh, workers' comp was on the set, on the agenda last year. Is on it again this year. Do you think uh, as you're looking at our crystal ball and tell us whether or not you think we're going to perhaps move toward a less adversarial system, if not this session and in the near term? Well, there were, there were a lot of our friends on both sides of the issue this year on the workers' comp bill. There were business interests on both sides, and the governor didn't take a public position. But uh, as both of you know, she's consistently been a leader on uh, workers' comp reform and also making sure that uh, injured workers are taken care of and, and get back to work mm -hmm. promptly. Uh, she's committed to doing that. Uh, I'm not sure that, that we're going to address that issue specifically. We're, we've been very busy trying to implement last year's reforms, yeah. but the governor's committed to, uh, to getting our costs down. We're still a high-cost state. We, th we believe uh, the judges she just appointed that are up for Senate confirmation uh, are going to be fair judges. They're going to be reasonable and, and, and help uh, make sure people are taken care of but not uh, drive the costs up. And so. I think she's done a lot this year in that arena and is open to discussion going forward. What about corrections? I, I haven't heard a whole lot of that discussion this, uh, this session as opposed to previous years. Well, there, there's been a lot of discussion on the, on the speaker's uh, JR, justice reinvestment uh, effort, and uh, it's received bipartisan support in both houses. Um, it, it's focused on treatment issues. Um, looks like it's heading to the governor's desk, and we'll see what that does to address that issue. Um, we still have um, a large number of, uh, of people locked up, but, it, but you look at what they did, they, uh, we had some people do some bad things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the governor has tried to balance uh, public safety as the first priority of government, but be responsive to uh, treatment issues for people so that they don't recidivate. In general, revenue is up this year over last year? It is. Uh, we, there will be a healthy deposit in the rainy day fund. Um, there's no indication by any of the members of uh, the legislature or the governor of touching that this year. And, um, I, you know, it's my belief that by having left that alone during the, the last, over the last decade, it was there when tough times came. And, and so that's good. We're starting to rebuild our, our, uh, our, our rainy day fund for when it does rain. What about higher ed? Is that getting any treatment this year that, uh, that has uh, Glenn Johnson's interest? You know, that I, I think. As part of the budget process, that will tell the tale. Higher ed says that there are some fixed costs that are going up, and they're asking for an increase. Um, it's it's as we talked about revenues up, but it's uh, it's pretty limited as far as what's available there. But there is a discussion about how to get caught up um, accessing some uh, non-appropriated funds to get the uh, endowed shares caught up. It's a great public-private partnership uh, where private businesses put the money up front, and, and the state matches that. Uh, it's been such a successful program. We're, the state's behind in, in catching up and doing its part, and so there's a discussion about uh, trying to get caught up there. What about, I'm sorry, Go ahead. what about the state capital crumbling and, and getting it fixed, the brick and mortar problem? I know that that uh, wasn't the governor's fault. There was some suggestion uh, that that was the effect of the Republicans taking control of the legislature <laughs> for the first time in history that the foundations just shook, but uh, <laughs> what's really happening on that? Well, I, I do think uh, that there is agreement uh, in both the legislative chambers and, and certainly the governor will be pushing for a bond issue to get the capital caught up. I wish that the, um, those costs would have been built into the budget uh, over the last 100 years where we wouldn't have to do this, but 
we are approaching the centennial of the building and, and it makes sense and the governor has pushed for that and it looks like that'll happen. Now, uh, uh, on the bond front issue, uh, there is the issue that the governor has been out front on, uh, the Native American Cultural Center. She'd like to complete that. Uh, it, it's not been without controversy and that's an issue that uh, the governor would, would very much like to see a vote occur on this session to, to move forward. What are the chances of that? Well, there there have been mixed comments from from people in the legislature. Uh, we'll continue to push from from the governor's standpoint, but uh, it's unclear at this point. Unemployment rate seems to be in, in very good shape nationally. It continues to go great nationally, and your city continues to lead, uh, be at the top of the list of uh, shining examples. So it's good. And uh, the, the, um, the governor has pro jobs legislation going forward. That's right. Uh, we, that's the focus. We, we think the tax cut is part of that. We think that uh, transportation and infrastructure uh, continue to do the, uh, implement the education reforms and the things that she's pushed forward are all about creating jobs. And uh, Oklahoma's been a net importer primarily from California where they're talking about raising taxes dramatically. Ideally, what would the state income tax be from a pro-business job created situation? Well, the governor has proposed one that would phase it out uh, completely. I don't know if that's going to happen this session or not, but what we do know is, is study after study has said that if you get it down to about 3%, mm -hmm. uh, it, it no longer is an impediment for businesses to locate here or stay here. And so it seems to me that that, that ought to be part of the conversation, mm -hmm. however you restructure it. What about retirees and the way that they're taxed? I know it's you know, they don't have a whole lot of income, so it might be less of a factor, but is, is, does that weigh into the, the lower uh, income tax? You know, it's been a big part of the discussion uh, ever since I've been at the state capitol. Uh, we've never really uh, pulled the trigger on that. Mm -hmm. David Dank has a bill to do just that this year. I'm not sure what the status of that is, but I, I think Kent would agree with me. We've all had, in the, in the practice of law, we've, we've probably both had clients that when it came time to sell their businesses, made a decision to move to Texas or Florida. If keeping that human capital here uh, after they were to stay involved and, and mm -hmm. do things, I think benefits Oklahoma and so we need to find a solution to that. How have the leaders of both parties adjusted to their new roles uh, as majority minority? Well, I think uh, there are a lot of stresses of being a legislative leader. I've experienced that. I think both of uh, Speaker Steele and uh, President Pro Tem Bingman have done an excellent job. Uh, they've worked well with uh, the leaders in the minority party as well. Uh, Sean Burge in the Senate and, and uh, Representative Inman uh, have been part of the process and, and have contributed to it. And, and I think we've got a good group of leaders there right now. All right. Well, Mr. Secretary of State, thank you so much for coming on the verdict. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Yeah, we're Glenn, glad to have you back. Yeah. Good to be here. Glenn Coffey doing some great work as Secretary of State, also advising the governor as the legislative session winds up at the state capitol. Kent and I will be back with a final word when we return. You're watching The Verdict. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Mom and Dad to me. 
but started out with as a kinship foster mm -hmm. home. And, and when things didn't go well with her mom, um, she came to be with us permanently. I kind of was a, her adopted uh, mother anyway, just not legally, mm -hmm. until we got involved with mm -hmm. DHS. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. We are back on the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up a show with Secretary of State Glenn Coffey. Well, Glenn Coffey has done good work for the citizens of Oklahoma, no matter what position he has held, and he continues to do so, more or less behind the scenes in his policy advisor status. But, of course, he's got that Secretary of State's office running like mm -hmm. everybody would want it to, efficiently and friendly. And uh, uh, he, he's, he has a very nice touch of uh, about how to handle things, and he can walk into a room where folks are at each other's throat <laughs> and he can get them get both sides calmed down and make some progress so he's he's in a the job where he can really make some good things happen for us yeah he's perfectly positioned for this job you know I, in, this is his fifth visit on the verdict and I, I uh, kind of noticed that in in the past he was speaking for himself and his members and now you can see he's speaking for the governor and and her priorities and also as, as he tries to move some of these policies forward you know trying to be realistic about what's what's obtainable uh, here in this session. There's also, you know, at, at the session this year, they moved up the filing dates. And I just, I know that's playing in the undercurrent here. Mm -hmm. um, candidates had to, to file earlier, which meant there was an election season that kind of transpired during the session. And that brings politics into the legislative, um, uh, uh, you know, ups and downs that usually isn't there. And, you know, they moved it there for, for, for logical reasons, but it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out here yeah. in the final days. Well, that's going to do it. You can get more information about uh, the Secretary of State at his website, sos.ok.gov. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.